Welcome back to the Diver Guide channel. We're gonna go over back dive tuck today. A lot of people think that back dive tuck is a very easy dive, but it takes a lot of body control and precision in every movement that you make. If you like these breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and we'll get right into it. Starting right here with this first diver. Now, this isn't the most wild looking dive. It's actually pretty good in terms of the entry. She goes in pretty straight and she has her toes pointed at the end and she's moving the right direction underwater as well. But the main part that we can talk about is the setup and the jump. In her oscillations, her arms come up, they're a little bit bent, they move in front of her body when you really want them to stay lateral and in one line along the side of the body. If you're a younger diver or lighter, you might have trouble moving the board and a lot of people compensate by by leaning backwards and using their shoulders too much to initiate the flip speed. If you're in that situation, the best thing that you can do is really work on getting the arms through without leaning back, trying to stay on top of the board as much as possible by keeping your eyes locked on the end of the board where that black line is or looking at a spot on the board by the fulcrum. Anything that keeps your gaze in front of you can help you keep your balance. We went over this a little bit in the back dive pike, but trying to get your hands and arms behind your ears on the takeoff is where that initial rotation can come from. Back dive tuck and pike comes from the lower body a little bit more than it comes from the upper body. And you can see that based off of her takeoff. Her upper body stays relatively stable throughout the flight of the dive while her legs come up to her chest. And then she kicks out towards the sky and lines up for the entry. On the kick out, you see how she comes out, upper body and lower body kind of at the same time. You'll notice that as people go further along in their process, they kick with their legs first and they look at their toes before looking back for the water. And let's move on to the next person. I don't know if this was meant to be just a drill. It could have been just a drill to practice the extension on the start, but she does not arm circle. She just drops her elbows down and then swings up a little bit with bent arms, which we want to try and straighten out as much as possible all the way up to 12 o'clock. And then you can tell the board is just about even with the water. It's just about parallel. And you can already see that she's bending her knees to get up into that tuck. As people get further along in their process, they will extend off the board straight a lot longer, which lets them get a lot higher in the air where they have more time to do the dive. She does a little bit of a pet peeve of a lot of coaches and a lot of judges where she's not really grabbing her tuck. Her arms are kind of sliding by her legs. One thing that you can do to differentiate yourself is actually getting into a deep tuck and really showing off the positions that you're using in the dive. That does not go unnoticed and a lot of people neglect that. One difference here between the first and second diver is on her kick, she is looking at her toes. She has a hollow position. She's looking at her toes. She still grabs a little bit early and she's going in front of her face a little bit too much. Her arms are a little bit too far away. She can slide along her body a little bit more or come out laterally, which we won't really see in any of the examples I could find of back dive tuck, but you'll see it a lot in back dive pike. But here you can see she just goes a little bit wide out in front of her face, which will carry her momentum over. If you keep your hands closer to your body, you'll be able to maintain a solid line a little bit better and control the entry. On the lineup, she didn't get her hands quite far enough back. You want your hands on this dive to be right at the back of your ears and extending up. You wanna be shrugging up for the water to really lock out and be airtight around your head and then swim hard for the entry. She just drifts over a little bit, but you can see as she's going in, she's initiating the knee save because she stays a little bit straighter as she goes in. Toes coming apart just a little bit. All right, next diver, we're going up to three meter quick. Remember the first person, her arms were coming up in front and bent. This person has his arms coming up to the side and then he squats in circles. And with a decent takeoff, his hands can still kind of get back a little bit further to really pop off the board. And again, he's lifting his knees a little bit early as well, rather than finishing the extension off the board and really jumping into the air. Now this dive can be hard to control, so a lot of people want to get in and out of the tuck as fast as possible, but the better you can control the jump and the kick out, the easier this will be. He's kicking at one o'clock, and for a back dive tuck on three meter, you might want to kick more at like two o'clock or 1.30, a little bit more in that direction because as you fall, you continue to rotate and you want to give some room for error. If you're going over, it's really hard to save at a certain point, but if you kick short, you can always cover it up by pulling a little bit extra for the entry. You might get knocked down because you might go a little archy, but it's better, in my opinion, than trying to save something that's really far over. 
Another way he could have saved this is after the kick, which he does beautifully. He's kicking, he's looking at his toes, he's holding that line. He kind of looks at his toes too long because his arms start moving before his head looks back. The sequence of events should really be kick, look, and then slide through with the arms or go lateral for the grab. He's kind of moving the arms too early, which gets his, his upper body kind of stuck in a tough situation. And his arms are going, again, far out in front of his face. See how his hands are kind of out in front of his eyes right now? And you can see he tries to knee save it. It's just a little bit too far gone, but that's all right. Now this next one, it's a little bit blurry, but it's a good example of how to kick to that two o'clock position and how it ends up straight by the end. This is a young kid. He's not really moving the board as much, but he swings through with pretty straight arms and he gets his arms pretty high up to 12 o'clock. He's leaning back slightly. You can see his position off the board. He's kind of leaning back there. So if he stayed on the board a little bit more, that might help, but he kicks and he's kicking at about two o'clock like we were talking about before and as he comes out he keeps his hands close to his body lines up the entry and it ends up pretty straight remembering that you're going to continue to rotate as you fall is a super important idea in lining up this dive now obviously his tuck is kind of sliding by like that second person he's not really showing the position his legs are in very deep for the tuck but he's not quite grabbing but overall for that age spectacular dive all right, let's go back down to one meter. This was probably the best springboard one I could find overall. There's obviously still a couple issues here that we'll go over. Oscillations are great. His arms are behind his ears here and he squats in pretty good alignment, but you can see already at the bottom of the press, his butt is a little bit behind his ankles already. He can stay a little bit more on his toes. That's partially because he crow hopped in. You can see his feet are overlapped with the board a lot, and it's just his heels kind of hanging off. I like having people on their toes a little bit more with maybe about half of their foot off the board, but this works for him. And look at this extension off the board here. This position, his arms are behind his ears, his hands are back, his arms are a little bit too bent, I would like to see his arms extend up a little bit higher and more straight, but he waits for the board to push up past horizontal before he starts bringing up his knees into that tuck. And again, this goes back to the idea that back dives are a lot more lower body than upper body. Look at how his upper body stays pretty stable. His legs come up and once he's all the way into a tuck, then his upper body starts to move back, right? Stable, stable, stable into the tuck and then out. So that's why I said before the jump and leg placement are probably two of the more important parts of this. If you can jump without engaging your shoulders and staying on top of the board, and if you can kick to the spot you want to kick to whether you're on one meter and it's 11 o'clock or if you're on three meter and it's got to be a little bit more towards horizontal or if we're on 10 meter and you have to go even further you have to be able to place it properly he looks at his toes and then he looks back and then his arms start coming through which is the great timing that we're talking about the only thing that i really didn't like about the end of this dive is after his kick which was slightly too short he lost his core engagement so you can see right here as he's looking back Back, he arches rather than keeping his toes up and kind of holding that hollow position with his core super tight he has to pull it in just to get it to go to vertical but he's kind of hiding the fact that it was going to go short so that's why it ends up a little bit splashy uh, overall a really solid dive though and now let's talk about this last one and this is actually a back dive tuck that i found from a 10 meter event which is pretty awesome because this is not a common dive but it shows how much control is needed on takeoffs and how the kick placement matters now you can see that they extend all the way off the platform and then they get up into that tuck now for 10 meter look at where they're kicking that just goes to show you how much you're going to continue to rotate as you fall you can see when their heads go back that adds extra rotation when their hands come through that adds a little extra rotation if you have the opportunity to do platform it will enhance your springboard diving because the sequence of events on platform have to be done properly in order for a dive to go well on springboard you have some help from the board but on the platform if you're leaning back too far you're going to smack it's a lot harder to maintain control all right let's take a look at this other angle of this dive this is their extension off the board, hands all the way up towards the ceiling, and then they bend up into that tuck quick, and they kick exactly where they want to. Now you'll see that the guy on the right actually rotates a little bit. He gets a little bit crooked, but let's take a look at the guy on the left. Look how long he's looking at his toes for. 
falling, falling, and now he's looking back. Right at about seven meters when he starts to look back. Think about how much time has passed before he looks back for the water. Show control in your kick out. A lot of people want to rush to see the water. They want to get right to the entry, but if you have a strong jump and you've got extra time in the air, show off that position because the judges and your coaches will be really happy to see that. And then they slide their arms through, not super far in front. The guy on the left comes out a little bit to the side so that he can control the rotation and then they lock out air tight and entry and take a look at the underwater you can see where their bubbles are going their hands going wide and the bubbles going to the side spreading out all of the air that they're bringing down with them and that's how you can have very clean entries especially the guy on the left he absolutely disappears on this and it's all because of that tight squeeze there and a fast swim to the side all right that's back dive tuck i hope that was helpful drills to help you with this would really be working on that back jump having the ability to tap the board with your fingertips as you go by but making sure that you're extending fully off the board so you have to finish the jump up with straight legs before you even think about moving your arms down to touch and then think about placing your kick if you place your kick properly and you can hold that body line that'll help you long term as well if you're looking for extra help on any of your dives, you can sign up with the link below to do a one-on-one -on -one session with me and we can talk about any other issues I see with your dives if you send me videos. If not, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you on the next one.